Hello everybody, my name is Ryan and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today to watch season three, episode one of Ted Lasso. I'm gonna start out by apologizing <laughs> for how I behaved <laughs> in the last episode. I don't think I really need to apologize necessarily. I am watching this the very next day, so I've had time to sleep on my feelings. Don't worry, I'm still fucking livid with Nathan. I was very extreme though. I just feel like there are some things that like, I would have trouble forgiving. You know what I mean? And I felt like I don't know, there were other characters like Jamie in other seasons and stuff where he did things that were not okay. He treated people badly, he did this and that. But the difference is, is like I, I feel like he actually was sorry about those things. Like when he came back and was apologizing and everything like that. Even though he was kind of apologizing to everybody for everything that he did. Like I actually think that he felt bad looking back on the way that he treated people. And is actively taking steps to try to be a better person. Whereas Nathan got a little taste of power and leadership. And decided to shit on the people who made him feel bad. Like Colin and... Well, it was really only Colin who he took it out on, and then Will, because obviously Will's never made him feel bad. And I just, like, there have always been things that Nathan has done and said that have not sat right with me. Like, the way he spoke to Rebecca when he got his promotion, not okay, because he thought he was being fired or whatever not okay to speak to somebody like that. Even the pep talk or like the team meeting that he was having where he was calling everybody out. And like, I was loving it and I was laughing along and I was like, come on Nathan, speak up. Because of the situation of him being bullied and stuff like that, I've always felt bad for Nathan and have like really wanted his growth and him to succeed in life. Especially based on the snippets that we've seen of his home life in season two and the fact that his dad seems to not really care about him and is never really proud of the things that he's done. So that has always made me feel really bad. But there does come a point where you can't support somebody anymore. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you can understand and I can understand that the way Nathan is treated is like how he's gotten to the point that he's gotten to now. But, like, there is a point where that's an active choice. That's not just something that happens to a person. Somebody doesn't just, like, get bullied, rise to the top, and decide to treat every, every person that he feels like is weaker than him or beneath him like shit. That's an active choice that he has made every single episode in this season to try to make himself feel better. And like I said, I feel like I've also given him a lot of, like, the benefit of the doubt this season. So, him outing Ted's anxiety and his mental health struggles at the end of episode 11 and then all of episode 12. I was just over it at that point and, like, very unimpressed by his behavior, appalled by his behavior. And it wasn't just one moment in episode 12. It was, like every single scene, every single thing. And instead of being a big boy and a grown up and having an actual adult conversation to like express his feelings before it got to the point where he was treating like everybody like shit and being snappy about everything, he blew up on Ted, which was completely uncalled for because Ted has not done anything wrong or treated him any differently, I would say. I think Ted has always believed in Nathan, always given Nathan credit where credit's due, but like, just completely uncalled for, from everything. And then they win using his false nine, Ted's done nothing but give him credit for the whole time. Then he's pissed because they won with it, 
and he goes in and tears up the believe sign like a toddler. So it's like, I definitely still feel the same way that I felt in the last episode. My emotions were just like so high because I was going into it like once again, not okay with the way Nathan had, you know, reported to Trent about it because that's never going to be okay and I really don't know that that's something that I can really like forgive him for unless he fucking grovels in an apology to Ted. It is just very disappointing to me because he was one of my favorites in the first season and I feel like I saw a path where he could have done so much good. So I was really let down by him, which is why my emotions were so high. And there does come a point where it just becomes like, at this point, and no matter what kind of treatment you have experienced, it does not excuse the behavior that you have been exhibiting, even a little bit. Like, you can't be like, oh, well, daddy treated me like this, so that's why I'm bullying, like, every single human. I'm giving everybody fucking terrible attitude. I'm Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Every single person in this show, in life, has their own fucking issues that they deal with day in and day out. And I don't know, you don't really see them treating every single person that they come in contact to, in contact with, how you've been treating them. So that's kind of like where my mindset is with Nathan. I'm over him, frankly. I mean, he didn't want to listen to anything Ted was saying. He just wanted to yell at him and leave. So it's like at that point, like, I just have no interest at all. And that's why I was so upset. Because even with him apologizing when Beard made him, like, even that, I was like, okay, good, you apologized. But he didn't mean it. He didn't actually feel sorry. He actually did want to treat Colin that way. And that's why he turned around and treated Will like that immediately again. And, yeah, I think that Ted and Beard and stuff should have called him out on the behavior episode one when he was treating Will like shit. Episode two when he was treating Will like shit because he treats Will like shit every single second of every single day. But they didn't. And so it just snowballed into something worse. But yeah, at this point, fuck Nathan. I'm over him. For real. Like I said, there will have to be some serious groveling. And even then, I don't know that like I don't know. I don't know. I'm unamused. Obviously, he is now probably, I believe, the head coach of Rupert's team. We have been promoted, which is lovely. Sam has decided to stay. I'm curious to see if we're going to see more like Sam and Rebecca. It is interesting because I do think they get on quite well despite the age difference, but I do think that it is quite an issue that she owns the team that he plays on and is his boss. So I feel like that's like the huge issue there and that power dynamic, even though they kind of pursued each other initially without knowing that. And he definitely pursued her over her pursuing him that night at the date. But that's what's going to get messy. And that's what's going to get like, ugh. I am wondering if we're going to see more of Dr. Sharon. And I'm worried about the way that Keely and Roy ended there at the end with him going on vacation for six weeks and her being like, I can't go. It kind of felt a little weird, so I'm hoping they're okay. All in all. I think that's all I have to say. Sorry for the long-winded intro, but I did feel like with everything having settled, I needed to express my emotions and my feelings on Nathan before we started, like a little bit more clear than I did in the last episode, just because I was, I was fuming. I was fuming. I don't think anything was really coherent. I was just seeing red and it made me mad. And at this point, I feel like I have done all I could to understand him and where he was coming from. But again, it just gets to a point where it's like, how long can that be an excuse? How many times can that be an excuse? Over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? So that's my feelings on that. I am very excited to get into this season, although I am quite sad that it is the last season, but I feel like our goal is to win the whole damn thing now, right? And now we have another obstacle 
being Rupert's fucking team with Nathan. Nate the not so fucking great anymore. Well, that was a lot. <laughs> As always, the full episode reaction for this episode and all of the other episodes will be up on my Patreon. The link for that is down below. And without any further ado, let's just jump right in to Season 3, Episode 1 of Ted Lasso. Let's go. This is the final boarding call for Flight 822 to Kansas City. Final boarding for Flight 822. Oh, look at this man. Is he he's going to Kansas? Oh. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Hey, we got to roll. Come on. Oh. Let's go. Okay. Your mom saying you okay. okay. That was for him. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Less movies about clowns and sewers, the better, right? <laughs> Amen, Big Ben. Oh, here. Dad. <laughs> hey. A little tiny Premier League trophy? I mean, it's just out until you win the real one. Come on, Henry. It's nice that he got to spend this time with him. That makes me really happy. I love you too, Dad. Okay, get out of here. How you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Mm, I'm happy he's still talking to her. You know, I remember being left at school when I was Henry's age. I ended up helping our custodian, Mr. Maher, clean half the school until my dad remembered to come pick me up. This is sad, having to clean up everything. He ended up getting hit by a train. Oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, well, well, neither did Mr. Maher. Well, I guess I do sometimes wonder what the heck I'm still doing here. Yeah, it's not third year. You don't quit things, Ted. Right, right, yeah. But hey, maybe my being here is doing more hurt than helping at this point, you know? Okay, let's see. You date anyone? Pass. Ooh, you usually say no to that one. <laughs> I'm happy that they're still in contact and that we're getting to see some Dr. Sharon. Is she pregnant? You finally got off. Well, you I don't know, to... just the way she was holding her stomach had me thinking maybe. All of them have us finishing last this season. Oh. oh. Oh, no rhyming salutation. Something wrong? We didn't notice, Amos Otis. Yeah, Henry went back to Kansas this morning. Oh. Yeah. But hey, I, I don't mean to come in here and mm. tinkle on y'all's toenails. Okay. That's weird. It's picked Richmond to finish in 20th place this season. That's horrible. Rupert to finish in the top four. Rupert's going to play this year? Yeah, I'm fuck Rupert. No. Oh, so you mean West Ham? Precisely. Everyone thinks... <laughs> Everyone thinks they are better than us. Yes, that's what I said, they. So, what's the plan? How are we going to beat him? Them. Exactly. To update our roster, put some more firepower in the team. That is a great idea, Leslie. Oh, God. Are we getting new players? I think we're going to do just fine this season. Ted, this team doing just fine is a far cry from you telling me we're going to win the whole fucking thing. Did you say that? Yes, you did. Over there after the Man City loss. That's true. Ted Lasso, I want coaching my team this season. The one who's willing to fight. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got a new belief sign. That makes me happy. Dead lost. Oh. Dead last. Who wrote that? Fucking everybody, bro. Glenn Hoddle, Graham Sooness, Jermaine Genius. Hey, hey, lads. Hey, we ain't gonna get relegated because oh. we're together. Jamie's hair. What is that? <laughs> Statistically speaking, <laughs> on, most teams who get... This is the best way for us to play this season. The 4-4-2, which is... Four defenders, four in the midfield, and two up front. Yeah, I got it. Holy shit. Bill Priggs have played 4-4-2 ever since they were kids, which means they'll always know what they're supposed to do, and more importantly, where they're supposed to be at every fucking minute of every fucking game. Yeesh. Who invented this thing? The Russians? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. I don't want to see anything about Nathan. I don't. I don't want to see anything about him. Disgusting. I'm so unamused. Real nice, Nathan. There he is. The wonder kid himself. Get out. 
He's such an ass. Oh my god, look at her. Thank you. Fuck you, Joe Rogan. Come on, Kelly. They had to break the lease because the boss kept getting caught pinching his employees' butts all the time. Well. Oh my god. It does explain why my office comes with fun features like this. Look, watch. It's all right. Hey. Hey, you all right? I'm here. Kelly. Hey. Tell me my schedule to sit at my desk and cry. They heard all the pundits saying we suck. Fuck pundits. You were a pundit. Yeah. And all we did was talk. Fuck them. Hey, coach, I don't know about you, but kind of feels like look at Will. What is he doing over there? You want to have class outside. What the fuck are you two talking about? We are outside. <laughs> uh, ever since his cult got shot. Oh, 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 Kenneth was in a cult? No, 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 no. He was the leader of them. Who's Kenneth? And last one in the parking lot has to eat a little bug. Everyone run except Roy. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> Everyone run except Roy. Crying is the best, isn't it? It's like an orgasm for the soul. Oh. Facts. Mm. <laughs> Someone's predicted Richmond to finish last. I mean, what floppy cocks? Mm. You're not actually worried about that, though, right? No, not really. Yeah, people like Teddy Ted, right? Yes, I suppose so. Back then, I wanted to destroy everything Rupert loved and owned and coveted. You know and now she wants to do the same thing. Doesn't feel the need to destroy Rupert's life. No, the Naomi just wants to beat him. To win. That's growth, right? Sure. But <laughs> you want to spend two hundred pounds every week on flowers? Yeah. Why? So the office is cheerful and smells nice. Flowers are for two things, Miss Jones: dead people and dead marriages. Oh my God! Come over it. Come over it. Come and stand on this line for me. This, this, over it. This is a very... Yeah, come on, Nathan. Get that humiliation. This is the dum-dum line. This is where dum-dums go. Stay. You, go in for the dum-dum. Try not to join him on the line. Go. Joe, we're going to see two things at play here, right? Yeah. Take over here. Five more minutes of this and just one until the drop. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, gosh. We're going to see, like bullying as a coach and then hopefully Ted's good like positive training and hopefully the positive training is going to come out on top especially poor old Richmond <laughs> can you believe they're picked to finish 20th yeah because there's no 21st <laughs> they didn't know what they had letting you go Nathan Shelley, you are a killer. Security thinks one of the new cleaners must have parked in the prestige lot by accident. <laughs> yes. Is it his car? It's have repercussions. Just want to just have a look. Um, yes, that's my car. I can move it. No, it's okay. My apologies, Nathan. Is he going to get in trouble? Nathan. I know you'll make me proud. I believe in you. He's clearly very scared of Rupert. And good. I don't give a fuck. He should be. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fine. Come on, Sam. I'm being the first one. What are we doing? Is that Roy Kent? Denied. Roy Kent! Is that you? Get fucked! Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go on to them. They're gonna be like, look, they really are trash. They're going in the sewer tree. <laughs> what is she doing? Oh. Are you sure you want to watch this? No, I don't want to, Leslie, but it's part of my job. Yeah, that's true. 
that would say something snide about me or the team. Where are they, by the way? Shouldn't they be training now? The London sewer system. Disgusting. Mm. <laughs> the fellow sitting next to him was watching that horror movie, It. And, well, Henry accidentally ended up watching it, too. When he heard about this tour, he has to go on it in order to face his fears. It's fucking smart. Yeah, that is good. Oh, it's way into the River Thames. Anyone know what that epidemic was called? Great stink of 1858. That's correct. <laughs> Come on, right, Go ahead, Ivan. Keep cooking. <laughs> this is so funny. You think he's going to be an asshole? Or you think he's going to be humble and sweet? How are you and the lads getting on? Yeah, really great. Um, getting to know them, getting to know all about them. So, <laughs> oh, Tron, is it a little harder to be the face of the team than you thought, Nathan? Oh, is it a little? Is it a little harder? Are you getting a little anxious, buddy? What is he doing? It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. Like this is what I mean. Like, it's gonna try to make me feel bad, and I don't at this point. It must all feel a bit overwhelming for you, yes? He's gonna be rude. Because I earned this job. What's overwhelming is the confusion I feel when someone so intelligent looking asks such a stupid question. <laughs> what are we surrounded by down here? We're surrounded by poopy. Eh? Mm-hmm, that's right. But if you ask me, we're surrounded by a whole bunch of poop, eh? Up there as well, yeah? They're blocked up by other people's dookie. Y'all need to make an internal... And then connect to each other's tunnels. Help each other keep that flow. Come on, Ted. Confidence? You know, borrow some of Jamie's. Yeah? Or if you're feeling down, you know, get some Danny in your life. Probably because there's no 21st. <laughs> That's what I mean, like, what's gonna happen if Nathan slips up? It's gonna be them coming out of the sewer or going in the sewer. Yeah, well, it makes sense to me. We'll be have to train in a sewer because their coach is so shitty. Fuck off, Nathan! Yeah, no, I agree. That nutter told me to ask the fucking earth to help me carry some of my burden. Ain't wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. What? That little prick. Who? Nathan. Hey, hey, lads, lads, lads. Remember, it's just pooper. Let it flow. <laughs> I love Jamie. See me in my office now. Uh oh, she's gonna be like, you're embarrassing us. Hey boss. Where were you this afternoon? Oh, I took the fellas on a little impromptu field trip. Yes, to a sewer, Ted. I know, everyone knows. Oh God, Rebecca, don't be like this. And my manager decided to skip training and take our players into a fucking sewer. No, yeah, I can see your point. Rupert is laughing at me, Ted. And I am begging you, please, fight back. This is, this is good for her to say that. Do you have any response to the comments made earlier today by your former assistant coach, Nathan Shelley? I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> that's right, laugh at him. Didn't he? No doubt about that. <laughs> hey, but that's Nathan great for you. You know, he's the same way on the pitch. You know, he'll find the tiniest little weakness in the team and just want to attack that. And smart. They're real lucky to have him over there at West Ham. I wish him the best of luck. Yep. Kill him with kindness. I guess I'm a little surprised that's all you could come up with. Especially yeah, against okay. me. You know, not one joke about me being a dumb American. Come on, man. Sitting there. I mean, I'm so dumb. Y'all supposed to say, how dumb are you? Mm -hmm. yeah, about this mustache? I, I, I look like Ned Flanders is doing cosplay as Ned Flanders. <laughs> That's it. He can throw in little digs. He can. <laughs> and he knows I'm little... I'm more than Kevin Costner's outfield. <laughs> and playing into it is going to piss Nathan off. 
Pardon my panic attacks. I've had more psychotic episodes than Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm so crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> Yeah, they're having fun over there, Nathan. And he still calls you Nate the Great, you little butthole. Mm-hmm. They're gonna come for you, Nathan. You were a jerk, and Ted was nothing but kind. Hmm. <laughs> I just am like, I've spent basically one and a half seasons feeling sorry for him and wanting him to do great things. I should open it in front of you. I'll wait for you to leave. It's a call. Personally, I like the Mini Cooper better. <laughs> That's just me. Stupid Nate. I'm over Nate. Your Uncle Roy and I have something we need to tell you. Okay, uh, what? We're going we on a break. Out. Because your Uncle Roy and I talked and you and I can still see each other whenever you want to. Why are you breaking up? We're too busy. But you, you were both busy before. I have no words. I'm gobsmacked and heartbroken. We had a coach quit, so it's now my responsibility for tactics and strategies and shit. Right. I know you're scared about that, but it's gonna... Mm. Right. My mum and dad split up when I were four, so one of my core beliefs is that nothing lasts forever. Damn. That, that's painful. We still get to be friends, though. Yeah, so am I. We should probably go. Wow, I'm heartbroken. Uncle oh, Roy? Yeah? Are you sure you're doing the right thing? I don't know. Can I say a bad word? Go on. I think you're being stupid. I agree. Come on, Phoebe, give it to him. You ever wonder why we're here, Coach? In London or on Earth? Well, both, I guess. But for the sake of this conversation, let's go with London. Carry on. In the first place, but at this point, I can't tell if it's more crazy or less crazy that we're still here. True. But why is Nate off to the side? Oh, well, remember, he's not part of the team anymore, yeah? Yeah, but you can still be friends, right? Well, now, don't forget, winning ain't everything. Yeah, Dad, but you gotta try, right? Come on, Henry. Jake gave it to me. Oh, snap. Well, that's cool. Who's Jake? <laughs> Who's Jake? Mommy's friend. See? It lights up. Great. Oh, my God. Of course it was going to end with a bomb like that. Of course it was. Of course it was. Two major bombs for me. So we got confirmation that... I'm sorry. Kelly and Roy have broken up because they're busy. They still seem very bonded. Like she was talking to him about how she knows he's scared and stuff like that. So it really does just seem like a time thing as opposed to like it just not working out. And I'm happy that Phoebe was like, I think you're being stupid. And he was like... Yeah, you may be right about that. So I'm happy about all of that. I liked seeing the scene between Keely and Rebecca and them working it out and her saying, like, you kind of got to let Ted be Ted. I do think it was good that Rebecca kind of sat him down and was like, I need you to try to, like, beat him and put him in his place for me because this is really important to me and my feelings and everything like that. So I think that that was important for him to hear on, like, sh we need to try. I do think he could have explained to her a little bit, like, listen, all of the bad, like, publicity was getting to their brain, so I took them there for a specific lesson regarding this so that we could get our heads on properly to train better 
and be more effective in all of that. And I think it would have went over a little bit better. It was also interesting seeing the two differences between the two press conferences, Nate's and Ted's. Nate did nothing but belittle people. Ted stayed winning, cracking jokes and getting everybody involved and laughing and having a good time. The way Nathan is treating all of the people at his new place, telling them to get out and be all snappy, but clearly is scared of Rupert, as he should be. You should be scared of Rupert. And it's like, again, like, oh, you were anxious at the press conference. Like, how does that make you feel? Just, it just makes me angry because it's like, you had the audacity to leak that same thing happening to Ted. No problem doing that. Like, I'm not going to feel bad that you're experiencing it now. Like, good, now you know how it feels. And maybe you don't want people to know that about you without you wanting them to know that and you outed that and took that away from ted so nice job there i am happy we got to see ted spend time with his son although it did slip that his ex-wife has a new friend jake so that's a whole other thing but i'm very worried just going forward we need to win we need to win the whole thing i have hope but, like, I am scared because I don't know. I don't necessarily know that it's going to end happily. I love Jamie, as always. He's killing it, really turning it around. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of Will. That was a very fun time. Overall, great first episode. And we opened up with Ted. So, obviously, the season's going to end with a close-up of Ted. And I'm very curious to see what that shot's going to be like as opposed to the beginning one because that was rough. Thank you so much for watching this episode with me. As always, the full episode reaction for this episode and all the other episodes will be up on my Patreon. The link to that's down below. And I'll see you guys back here with me for the next episode. Bye, guys.